Welcome to Everything EFL Podcast. My name's Erin O'Byrne, and I absolutely love sharing my knowledge with you, my darling teacher, and helping you build not only community, but your students' confidence. I truly believe that a positive frame of mind is essential for your students to learn. There's also a bunch of other teachy stuff thrown in for good measure too. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. Welcome to Everything EFL Podcast. If you are one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. Lovely to have you. If you're a brand new listener, you are most welcome. Lovely to have you too. This may well be my final episode of the year. If you're a long time listener, you'll know that I usually stop around mid-December and kick off again at around the end of January. I might start a bit earlier next year. Not sure, to be honest, but I do actually really enjoy that big long break. Kind of need it. If you're in the EFL business, that's if, if, if you work in a private language school, you know yourself. We don't really get a summer holiday. Well, that's actually our busiest time. So the only time we do get off really is a couple of weeks over Christmas. And to be honest, I like to extend that a little bit with the podcast, you know, just to have a break because it is a lot of work. I was telling someone yesterday, you know, it's not just the recording. You've got to write it. You've got to record. You've got to edit. You've got to do like the, the episode cover art. You've got to schedule it on your social media. You've got to write the episode description. You've got to upload it to YouTube. There is a lot that goes into it. So to be honest, I really appreciate that sort of five, six week break. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Today, guys, it's Future Forms Reloaded. What do I mean? Well, if you go way back to episodes 42A and B, I talked about the future. I talked about will, going to and the present continuous, but it was all very kind of non-lexical. It was um, before the lockdown, before I really got into the lexical approach. So it's very, I would call it mechanical, you know, giving you the rules kind of thing. And, you know, if that's still your thing, brilliant. I'm not going to criticise that. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I've talked about this before. Grammar rules are safe. They're a security blanket. Students are familiar with them. You're familiar with them. Students often demand or expect them, you know, and also when we're taught how to teach, we're often only taught this one way of approaching grammar. But as always, ask yourself a question. Do you think it works? Now, I've been thinking about redoing this episode for a while. So here goes. If you want to get a more rounded idea before you dive into this one about how to incorporate grammar in a more lexical way, check out episode 61. But the basic premise is this. Rules-based grammar is overwhelming. We generally spend more time presenting and doing gap fills rather than actually, you know, getting students to practice and produce the language. There just isn't time. I mean, think about comparatives. Think about how many bloody little rules there are with the comparatives about syllables and and the IEST and the Y and then like, you know, the more than or the EST for the superlatives and then all the little exceptions. It's a feckin' nightmare. So, you know, you could just spend forever just looking at that. And, but how many times have you heard your B2 students saying, it's more easier? You know what I'm talking about. And now let's think about future forms. I mean, it's a minefield. Students generally seem to sort of default to will for everything. And, you know, usually your course book has two or more future forms together. Will versus going to. Going to versus present continuous. Um... And I do think that contrasting two future forms or grammar points can be a nice idea just to clarify a few concepts. But the same problems still arise. Students don't know how to use it. So I'm going to say something I've said a million times. Dive in and go lexical. Think of some really common verbs we use with will. Now, I'm going to focus for this episode on will for spontaneous decisions because, you know, last year when I was teaching online, the same issue came up. We had um, like all the uses of will or something like that. It was like all future forms for upper intermediate. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because that's just cognitive overload to the extreme. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to focus on one aspect and we're going to do will for spontaneous decisions because I think um, students always use present simple the world over, you know, it's hot, I open the window. Um, It's possibly a translation, I imagine, from a lot of languages, but it's just what comes out of their mouths. So I chose some phrases like, I'll see you later, I'll give it a try, I'll see you then, I'll see you there. I'll think about it. 
I'll get this in the context of, you know, I'm going to pay for this bill in a restaurant. Don't worry, I'll do it. Now, they may seem a little bit vague, but this is the beauty of it. These phrases can be used in loads of different situations. So I sometimes think the vaguer, the better. OK, now, if you want to be a little bit more specific, you could do like a little activity when you're introducing these to say something like, um, I forgot to email my boss. And the response could be, don't worry, I'll do it. Or you could ask your students to replace it with a particular verb. So, for example, don't worry, I'll send it. Or, oh, I just made a mess. Don't worry, I'll clean it up. You know, don't worry, I'll. That's kind of the key phrase here. And then maybe you can replace it with something else if you want to be more specific. Your choice, guys. Like I always say, you know your students best. You do this how you want. Steal and adapt. OK, so... This is what I did. I did this on Jamboard because I was online. Um, in a classroom, I'd probably just cut up strips of paper. But I made some two-line dialogues. Um, this may sound familiar to some of you, but I just think it's good to go over this again because I do think it's very effective. So I made some two-line dialogues. For example, um, so um, seven o'clock then? OK, I'll see you later. Something like that. Just very, very simple dialogues. OK, and um, basically the dialogues are completely cut up. So if you have six two line dialogues, you should have 12 pieces of paper all with like one line on them. And the goal is for students to match them. Now on Jamboard, it could be a matter of just, you know, moving those little sticky notes together. Um, in class, you could give each student or each pair of students one of those lines and they have to kind of mingle, find their partner, find the the correct um, matching line and then they can kind of stand there and then you get them all to read out their dialogue and check whether they're correct. Then you can present your students with a handout of the correct dialogues. You could do a bit of pronunciation, definitely focusing on contractions with aisle. Even when reading out loud, students tend to separate the contractions and say, I will. So it's good to give them a bit of drilling there. And again, just let them know at every opportunity, use contractions when you speak. You could do a bit of stress or connective speech if the students are able. You could always come back to those things in a future lesson and reuse the same dialogues, but just shift the pronunciation focus. Less prep, less stress for you. Always get students to speculate as well on the dialogue. So who's talking? Um, what's their relationship? What do you think the context is? And if there is a word like it or there, what is this? What is this referring to? It just gets their brains working in the right direction. Now, you can get your students to create dialogues around those. Um, you can listen to episode 82. There's like a, a bonus writing activity at the end of that. We'll, we'll give you a bit of inspiration. But if you don't want to do that or you can't be bothered to listen to the episode, ask yourself, how else can I recycle these phrases? The obvious one, like I said, create dialogues. Um, you could also ask your students, you know, in what situations might you say these phrases? Ask them, have you ever said these in your own language? Create those connections. We learn language by forming connections in our brain. So form those sort of familiar connections or episodic memory connections. Now, if you're a little bit trepidatious with this, I completely understand. But ask yourself, how much time do you spend with your present, practice and produce do students get much of a chance to actually do the practice and produce part of it? Um, can they use and explore the target language in your classroom? Do they remember it the next week or the week after that? I firmly believe they have more chance of memorising and recalling these contextualised, institutionalised phrases. And the thing is, as well, is because they're so common, they'll probably hear them when they're watching a movie or a Netflix series or something like that. You could always do a bit of a combination of, you know, introducing the rules, which I sometimes do as well. You know, I the lexical approach, you know, I'm not completely 100 percent. I haven't mastered it. I haven't figured it all out, but I'm just trying a few things. And this, this kind of dialogue stuff, I think, is just a really nice, easy way for you and for the students to understand the language. But I'm asking you to take a leap of faith and try something a little bit different, especially if what you're doing already and what you've been doing for however many years doesn't seem to be working. And more importantly, let me know how it goes. So I'm going to challenge you, my darling, gorgeous teacher. Write down five to six institutionalised or common phrases with a future form. Or think about common verbs that we use with future forms, even if it's something like, I'll do it. 
All right. Now think of a, a context as well, or a, a function. So, are you talking about you know future arrangements? Are you talking about spontaneous decisions? Narrow your focus to kind of one thing, and then write down those phrases, and then. Think about how you can use these in the class next time you do grammar. You know, do you want to do that dialogue idea, or have you got another idea of your own? If you have, I would absolutely love to know because I'm always looking for new and interesting things to do as well. And you know, possibly I can always share them on my social media with the other teachers. Of course, I'll credit you. Of course, I will. If you fancy a little bit of Christmas cheer. I do have an episode, episode thirty-seven, so you have to kind of go way back down the list for that one. But I did it. Was it last year or the year before? With my good friend Sinead McMorrow, and we kind of ping-ponged a bunch of Christmas activity ideas. So check that out if you would like. So that's it, guys. Have an amazing Christmas break or an amazing Christmas, and look after yourself. Take this. Chance, take this opportunity to have a good rest. Treat yourself. Look after yourself. Spoil yourself. Have that manicure or that pedicure or that haircut that you've been dying to have for ages. One little thing you can do for me, just as a little Christmas present, if you like my content and you're happy to continue listening, you can just repay me in a few small ways. You can reshare any of my social media posts onto your social media. You can recommend me and talk me up in your classroom to your colleagues. You can send me an email with a request for a poster for your staff room, and I'll gladly send you one. And if you're subscribed, which you should be, you can press the little share icon and share this episode directly into one of your friends' WhatsApp inboxes. And if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm still going to wish you a happy Christmas, a fantastic New Year, and a good rest, so you can get ready to kick some ass next year. Okay, I love you lots. Thank you so much for your support this year, guys. My podcast has really started growing this year. Let's keep it going. Share the love, guys. Share the love. And for the final time this year, goodbye. <laughs>